Hi everyone, in this lesson we'll focus on the study of meaning from the point of view of semantics and pragmatics. First of all, it is important to ask what meaning is, and three relevant questions is first of all, what is meaning, and secondly, how do we express meaning, and finally, how do we understand it? These are some questions that are going to be answered by the study of semantics and pragmatics. Let's begin our exploration to the study of meaning by seeing this text in which the content words have been removed. As we can see, the words that are left carry very important grammatical information but very little meaning. Conversely, if we remove all of the words that carry grammatical information, we are left with a group of words that have very important semantic meaning. All of these words are called content words. If we look at the text now with both content and function words, we can see that the meaning is clear to us because we have words that carry a lot of important meaning and we have some other words that indicate the relationship between words so that we know how the ideas are organized. So the first important point that we need to make is that there are two kinds of words, content words that are also called full words or lexical words. These ones refer to things, qualities, states, or actions that have meaning, even in isolation. On the other hand, function words, which are also called form words, or empty words, or functures, or grammatical words, are words that have very little meaning on their own, but that show very important grammatical relationships in and between sentences. That is, they carry grammatical meaning. This table shows the content and function words. Content words are nouns and main verbs and adverbs and adjectives, question words such as what and where and why and how, demonstratives such as this and that and these, and the function words include the articles, the prepositions, auxiliary verbs, pronouns, conjunctions, and relative pronouns. Now that we know that Content words such as nouns are the ones that carry the most important lexical meaning. Let's begin by exploring the meaning of this very common word in Spanish. The first thing that we're going to notice is that every word has a denotation. That means an explicit or literal meaning. This means then that all of the words, expressions, and sentences refer to things in the real world, and this is called denotation. We have agreed that words have meanings or denotations. Let's see what it really takes to know a word. First of all, knowing a word means that we know the spelling and or pronunciation of the word, which is in this case madre. The second point is that you should be able to know the meaning of the word in all of its different contexts. For example, a biological mother, a nun, or any kind of object. The third thing that we need to know if we want to understand the meaning of a word is how to make other words from it. For example, we can make different words with the word madre, such as mamá, mamita, madrastra, and so on. The fourth point that we need to know about the word is the restrictions on the lexical or maybe grammatical use of the word. For example, we can say that feliz día de la madre is a common collocation of the word, but we probably cannot use it when it says salúdame a tú. In the same way, it would be very strange to say Dia de la Mama. So, sometimes we can use the words with certain combinations and sometimes we cannot because this brings some kind of oddness to our expressions. And since we have mentioned collocations, it is important to know that words are going to group together to create phrases or expressions such as madre sola y una, madre abnegada, a toda, and so on and so forth. So it is important to know what words collocate with what other words. And number six, 
we also need to know the figurative use of the word. For example, Madre Patria refers to the country. And when we talk about Madre related to a person, this can mean the quality and values that a person could have. So in this case, it is used with a figurative meaning. And last, but certainly not least, we also need to know about the linguistic and non-linguistic context of the use of the word and its frequency. For example, we know that madre, in this form, it can be used in a formal context, that it's also more common in writing than in spoken language, and so on. We know that there are various reduced forms of the word to be used in speaking, such as mama or ma or mami, and we can know exactly in what moments, in what context, we can use one or another form of the same word. So, from the analysis of the meanings of the word madre, we can come up with our first conclusion, which is that meaning is complex, multifarious, and multidimensional. We can take any other word in the Spanish language and we will see that the same thing will happen. The word can be different parts of speech, the word can have all kinds of different meanings, we can create new words using this base form of the word and we can create some collocations or idioms and even metaphors using exactly the same word. So the second conclusion here is that the same word of expression can have different meanings which is called polysemy. We will conclude this introduction by presenting a definition of semantics. So semantics can be defined as the study of the relationship between units of language and their meaning. When we talk about linguistic semantics, we mean the conventional meaning that is conveyed by the use of words or phrases or sentences of a language, which is called denotation. And for practical purposes, we can divide it into lexical semantics, which is going to study the meanings of morphemes in words, and phrasal or sentential semantics, which is going to study the meaning of phrases, expressions, and sentences. This is then a first approach to the study of meaning, and in our subsequent lessons we will be exploring different concepts in the field of semantics and pragmatics. Thanks a lot for your attention.